Good evening, everyone. We are just waiting to go live. And then we will have another wonderful session on skilling in our schools. Just a few seconds more and we shall be live. Okay, for now, a very, very happy evening to all the viewers who tuned in to yet another interesting webinar from International Internship University. Today's webinar is again on skilling in our schools. You know, it is a part of a series of the NEP India webinar series organized by IIU. And the beauty of this is that we have educators joining us from all parts of the country with their perspectives. Some of them coming in from a uh, leading rural school, some of them from leading private schools, and some of them, you know, leading low income private schools. So we have a spectrum of uh, uh, you know, feedback in of inputs coming in from all over the country. And NEP is a document, you know, which really needs to be read into its depth so that we can all understand it better. Once we understand it better, we are for sure going to be implementing it. Welcome once again to a beautiful session that we're going to have today on reimagining vocational education. So the day today is 10th of August and welcome once again to IIU platform, which is a leading virtual education system and global brand confederation, the most valuable and trusted worldwide and well reputed in delivering innovative programs. The NEP webinar series is one of their innovative programs over there. So IIU is committed to providing highest quality education to all the learners of the globe, regardless of social or economic background. So they have access to more than 1000 plus courses, you know, isn't that amazing? And internships, you know, so it, it read its wings in 195 countries, and they're still going strong, getting in more more countries I got muted. So what I was saying was that IIU has spread its wings to 195 countries and is still going strong. So viewers who tuned in through the Zoom session, we'll request you to kindly mute yourself so that we can go on uninterrupted. I was talking about the visionary founder of IIU, Mr. Piyush Pandey, sir, who's a committed aspiring social activist. I'm sure you've heard about him pretty much, uh, you know, outside this platform as well. A passion from the last two decades, providing education to students from various social and cultural backgrounds. So he has the dream of the WEP or the World Education Policy. One education, one foundation, and one world. Isn't that fantastic? I think that's why we are all here to talk the same language to our children, our future, right? So I take the initiative to reach every learner in rural as well as urban areas through the Vidyanjali Project, which is an initiative by the Ministry of Education, Government of India, to provide higher education as well as vocational training along with internship opportunities as the revolution in education. So welcome once all to a seminar on skins virtual platform whereby we are going to be talking about, you know, reimagining vocational education. How is it going to look? I'm Dr. Manjeet Lega. Um, I will just say two lines about myself that at heart, at core, I'm an educator anything related to education interests me i'm very passionate i've been blessed to have worked with 
thousands of teachers, principals, students, you know, across the length of the country. And that's where I've gathered my experience and expertise. So I am forever thankful to those teachers, children, principals, and management. So moving on to our show, you know, we are going to be talking about, uh, talking about, you know, how is the vocational education scene going to be unfolding, you know, in the diaspora of Indian education, keeping NEP in view. Now, yesterday was an, another interesting session about, you know, skilling in schools. And related to that, today we are moving on to vocational skilling in schools. How is this going to be looking like? How will it unfold for everyone? So to talk about it, our first guest for today is Dr. Sunil Srivastava. So Dr. Sunil Srivastava is the principal of Kids Kingdom Public School, Nanded. I hope you all heard of that place, Nanded. It's a holy city. And he holds an experience of 30 years, mind you. That's awesome, sir. An avid reader and a learner. And he is a leadership trainer for British Council and a master trainer for Kelo India. That is a very, very interesting um, that I mentioned to your experience. We hope to learn more about it. And of course, he's a trainer with CBSC. So welcome, sir. Welcome to this forum. And we would now like to see Baton on to you and hear your views about reimagining the scene called vocational education in India with the NEP around it. Yes. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Manjit ma'am. And thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sinta, madam, for uh, giving me this wonderful opportunity to interact on one of my favorite subjects. And uh, I'm really thankful to IIP, uh, IIU for all, uh, all, you know, I'm really happy that I'm part of this. Last year, uh, during one of the events, I, I was honored by IIU as a doctorate. And uh, so uh, definitely, uh, I think this was needed. I mean, after lockdown, uh, most of the schools uh, and the professionals, they started working into regular streams. And somehow this, uh, the focus on this was missing to an extent because uh, NEP was introduced in 2020 uh, amidst uh, the COVID. And after that, uh, the, the people have started you know, interpreting on their, in their own way about uh, this. Uh, but uh, this is very, very important topic. And it is very close to my heart as well, because I was just thinking, 1981, I matriculated myself. And uh, the first thing I did was, uh, my subject was vocational course. That time it was called as bifocal, 1990, 1981. And then 10 years down the line, I completed my graduation, post-graduation. And coincidentally, 1992-93, I was offered a job on a leave vacancy in my own college as an MCVC instructor. So I asked my teacher, that time my teacher was also there. He said that uh, it, earlier it was a bifocal. Now it, you know, they had changed this name. So it is called a minimum competency vocational course. And now uh, NAP has very thoughtfully given this word uh, that is re-imaging vocational education. It means that the, the skills would be the same, um, the fields would be the same, the streams would be the same, the subjects would be the same, but now we have to bring it to, uh, you know, uh, on uh, to, to the average people to take it forward. So in, in my 10 minutes or 15 minutes of discussion, I would like to basically highlight, uh, uh, if, permit, if permitted, to focus upon what the teacher is supposed to do. Because national education policy is just a document, maybe of some odd, 100 odd pages. And in that, everything is given. If you see one complete uh, topic, that is 16, uh, chapter 16, has been dedicated to this particular uh, subject. And Surprisingly, in that one, only one paragraph is dedicated to probably to the occasional education, how the teacher's capacity would be built up. So again, there is a, there is a fear, it's, it's maybe my, it's my apprehension, that if you are not doing anything, taking into consideration to the teachers, we cannot have the success. And uh, 
two three things i would like to definitely talk about is uh, it very rightly says that in india the occupational education is hardly you know 19 25 24% the workforce had just 5% whereas in germany it is 52% and uh, south korea it is as high as uh, 96% so this is this is what is told and we want to bring it to that level but the basic hurdle with this is that this subject itself in the last 40 years has not been succeeded whether it is a policy maker whether it is a teacher to convince the parents and the stakeholders that it is not less than any of the mainstream courses so still if you see if you see iti and iit so this there is difference but unfortunately we are not able to really minimize this gap and still it is going to be there i mean when i did my course in marketing and salesmanship uh, 40 years before so marketing was one of the best things those days and when i went to a, for, for a job after doing my course he said that aapko to salesman ko nokri karna hai so that attitude has to be changed and here the implementation of the program will come at the later stage but the first thing is that everyone i mean including the teaching fraternity the parents the society and the policy makers have to think one have to do one thing very promptly and as early as possible that what policies they are going to implement or what program they are going to chalk out to change the attitude of the society until there is not changed nothing is going to happen in this this is my my opinion i might be wrong and now in second phase i will tell how we can do that this is one important thing second important thing which i always uh, you know in in my lo- local even at talk i say that why not it it can happen by one way why not we the iits or neat examination should be i mean reserved for the candidates who take up this course at the school level apart from testing their entrance examination which is more of a theoretical and if i am not wrong medical medicine and engineering are more of skill based subjects rather than more of a academic so instead that the children there should be some questions there should be a paper separately which will focus upon the skill set of the candidates to see whether they are eligible to become an iit to join iit or not or to become an mbbs doctor or not so this is one thing which uh, i very strongly feel about uh, you know having this a second important thing is that when when we think of uh, reimagining uh, the vocational education we have to focus more upon the capacity building now we have talked about b woke we have talked about policy talks about b woke we policy talks about bringing down the skill sets skill courses to 6 to 8 standard and all that stuff and separate program is given we come to where is the confusion that also i will be able to share with you all so while doing this there has to be a course for the teachers which is to be very extensively because if if a teacher a mainstream teacher starts taking this course i don't know how successful the teacher would be to learn that course and then to implement or take it forward to the further to the students so what i feel is that there has to be a beard skill course or beard vocational course wherein uh, like the mainstream subjects one occasional subject should be taken by the teacher or the te- teacher learner while doing his course maybe of four years duration or two years duration or one year duration so to that i mean that is one way where we can build the capacities of the teacher second important thing is that when we talk about uh, It, it talks about that ten days of uh, bagless days, ten bagless days in a year. So, what exactly each day the teacher is supposed to be done? And I am very sure that this is not to be. This will not be told by the government. This will not be told by a maybe an education officer. It is the individual teacher who has to think on it. More of critical thinking. She has. He or she has to be more creative about it. and then she should plan that in this one day in a month probably how i am going to utilize this day either it's very clearly given a visit to the local fairs visit to the local artisans or visit to some place but there has to be their purpose is to be there 
what would be the learning objective what would be the learning outcome what are the processes to be followed what are the uh, steps to, to be taken to ensure the safety and security of the students when they are going out or when someone is coming to the organization so and then the starts uh, I, what I, what we have been doing i will tell you uh, we started this year on two more two important activities one is that we started inviting the parents once in a month and they will be addressing their respective wards class say so for example a person is a carpenter and he his son or daughter st uh, studies in class 4 so all the class 4 students will be sitting together and he will be talking to them what about his profession and also maybe he will teach something to them what is possible but this is not going to be long lasting it may create interest to, to an extent but when they go home and they see how the carpenter is treated so there will be definitely definitely difference so if we, if we consider the indian society and indian you know uh, people at large so we have to understand this particular thing and accordingly we can plan uh, certain aspects uh, the next important thing is that uh, it talks about uh, there are many aspirational goals are already uh, given in the, in this and uh, i think ma'am as of now it's fine i'll be more happy to answer the questions but one thing i would like to mention before i conclude and uh, switch over to you Uh, that we have started one more important thing that is ultimate curriculum this we are going to implement from this year again taking the clue from national education policy wherein we identified four areas of where the children should be developed one is he should be adventurist second he should be entrepreneur third he should be a leader and fourth he should be intellectual whatever he does in his life whatever he does in future these four things are required to be a successful doctor he has to be a successful entrepreneur and also he has to be an adventurist he should have he should have a habit of taking the risks so these these are the few points which i wanted to cover and i'll be more happy to answer a few more questions ma'am thank you so much perfectly so very well said dr shiva so thank you for your wonderful inputs i particularly align with you know the first opening statement which you said that we have to make it aspirational uh, i clearly remember the days in my schooling you know when the vocational uh, skilling or the vocational period was actually considered just a free period we would be all over the school there was no yeah. curriculum there was no outcome or objective map to it and that's how it went you know it was considered a free period but no longer now but to make the te teachers to responsible entity take it seriously we have to make it very very aspirational you know the way they aspire to go to the top mba school entities of the country same way our children should look forward to the uh, vocational Uh, programs run by a school so that is one we will have some more conversation around it and yes um, i totally agree with you that you know the teachers capacity building yeah yes sir you yes. wanted to say something how we got the admission to ncvc that is vocational course my teacher told me that ki practical mein bahut zyada mark milte hain iske aap aise hi pass ho jaoge yes yeah. that was the gospel truth true that that time and all of us used to follow it very true and the second thing which dr shrivastu very rightly said was the capacity building of the teachers you know uh, for the, you know yesterday also we were talking about the diploma in vocational education and the course for uh, teachers in vocational edu uh, education there is certification and diploma i think it should also be aspirational to take that so that that they can also appeal very important because you're going to be facing the children you know who are looking up to you so you need to be at par over there and we will also talk about backlist days the 10 backlist days in detail a good point they should be put to full use and they shouldn't just be considered like a fancy dress days you know they have to be considered as meaningful days and for anything to be meaningful we need a schedule a structure a routine Dean and map it to outcomes. You know, maybe we have some skill mailers around, or we have you know uh, a visit to an artisan, as you mentioned. We'll talk also in detail over there. And ultimate curriculum, sir. Can I request you to just kind of throw 
a little bit light on the uh, ultimate curriculum. We would just like to know a little bit more about that. Okay, fine, ma'am. Thank you so much. Actually, what we have done, we have divided um, almost uh, four, this course into four years. It will start with class six. Class six, there are four sections. We had divided class six into four sections. So one will be entrepreneur, second will be adventurist, third will be leaders, and fourth will be intellectuals. So in one year, uh, we have assigned some 60 to 70 hours. So suppose a student likes to take adventurist as his uh, subject, his first year. So in the first year, he will do the adventurist, second year, he will go for entrepreneur. In eighth standard, he will go for leadership, and in ninth standard, he will take the rest of the subject, rest of the area. And in this way, in four years, he will be completing all these four skill sets. Okay. Right, ma'am? Right. Right. So. Now, in this one year, what he will be doing, an adventurist will, first of all, he will understand the basics of what adventurist means, who are the adventurists. He will find out some biographies of some adventurists, more of a research program. Then he will read out some two books or two people who were really adventurous. Like it can be anyone, maybe mountaineers, maybe seafarers, what it may be, they will try to relate his life with them and what qualities he would be having. And then he will write, a, give a small write up. And then we'll plan for eight days of adventurous camp for them. Maybe to a nearby place. And once they do that camp, and then there will be reflection. In the process, uh, they will be meeting various people who are into adventure. They'll be visiting uh, some institutions. They'll be visiting some locations. So even their curriculum, even their education tour will be planned like that. They will not go for fun trip. They may not go to Manali. They may go to some other place where a lot of mountains are there, or sea rafting, uh, river, uh, river rafting is there. So that is the idea. The same will go with the leaders. So when we say leaders, leaders can be edu leaders, leaders can be political leaders, and administrative leaders. And then they will also explore those people and what are the careers for them. Say, for example, adventurous, we hope that in future he will take go into defense services. Taking a hit, he should get, take NCC, uh, then he should uh, go for uh, maybe uh, plan for NDA, maybe he start appearing for all India Sending School examinations, maybe he should start applying for RIMC, maybe he should think of uh, you know becoming joining a mountaineering institute after 12th standard, maybe a year's course. And that is how we are looking forward now. And a complete handholding will be given to that child for one year. So it will go for other courses as well. Anything else? Wonderful, add? sir. I think this is, yeah, no, that is great. I, I particularly uh, like the idea of, you know, it is like kind of making the children meet the role models. So for example, yeah. you know, risk taking. So maybe go and make the risk takers, which come under the adventurous part of your curriculum and then you know the real activists as well if you're doing uh, you know environment and you know go talk about the chipko movement also go and meet some of the environmentalists if possible those who are raising the flag in the nearby areas and actually see what do they do do they manage to make a living how tough is their life you know and how what do they follow in their routine these are the real skills which a child can learn Wonderfully said, sir. Thank you so much. And now we're going to move on to our next speaker for the evening, our very patient Neha Srivastav. Thank you for joining us, Neha. And Neha is a public speaker and she's currently working in an organization called In Ear. You know, wonderful name, In Ear. And she is an advisor over there. Whole, I would like to put it in quote marks, is to heal people who are suffering from mental health issues what a beautiful thought ma'am more power to you and earlier she was working uh, with the recruitment sector in that field and she's an mba and hr thing, and we wish you many many more laurels so neha Srivastav, we would like to hear your thoughts on imagine vocational education post the coming of a national education policy over to you ma'am Thank you so much, Manjeet, ma'am. It's uh, really an honor for giving such a good introduction. And I am feeling privileged to be a part of IIU International Internship University, where we are learning so much. And we are learning and we are training also. 
and today is yet another day where we are going to learn about reimagining vocational education so this is my topic and i'll be starting it so uh, to begin with i'll be going with my presentation slides what is vocational education all about that yes so uh, my topic is reimagining vocational education so my first slide talks about what is vocational education means uh, as the national education policy has started this vocational education so many uh, uh, so many people are wanted to know about what is actually vocational education so vocational education also called career and technical education prepares learners for jobs that are based in manual or practical activities traditionally non academic and are related to a specific trade occupation or vocation yes means it is uh, different from the academics from the bookish language which we are learning it is uh, entirely different from that and in vocational education you learn so much from practical exposure means like uh, when you uh, are learning something suppose i am learning chemistry i am learning physics okay i am doing that from book but in vocational education what is happening you are learning all that from a skilled professional and that is going to be from a practical exposure the basic difference between these two is theory versus practice exactly means it is entirely different the academic courses is theory all the bookish language means when i was in my school days i also used used to mug up the entire knowledge the it used to be so much boring also at times and i wanted to have my like extra co curricular activities the subjects related to vocational uh, education i wanted to have that and now this has become such a good good tremendous move this vocational education which is coming to highlight so an academic school teaches theoretical knowledge whereas a vocational school teaches applied skills such as carpentry auto mechanics and hair dressing means from these like uh, practical knowledge you can go to a skilled person and you can just see the means uh, what kind of skills he is having and from that you can learn from that and you can start applying it in the uh, normal uh, days i move to my second slide means uh, uh, if i talk about like uh, uh, vocational education uh, how it is helpful how it is going to be helpful it is going to be helpful in reducing unemployment definitely means employment opportunities are going to arise because so many students when we talk about that uh, what stream are you going to opt after uh, 10th uh, or in after 12th so they mainly mainly focuses on like uh, i want to opt for maths science and like i want to go in business sector i want to become a good doctor engineer lawyer but no one talks about these vocational education so means by uh, adopting uh, this vocational education so much employment opportunities can arise and uh, there is going to be a creativity in each and every individual because we all individual i suppose has so much talent in terms of creativity and uh, we are so much passionate about a creative part rather than about our theoretical knowledge so it's very very is going to be i think a tremendous move vocational education so that our passion our interest our strength all thing is going to be highlighted nep has again brought vocational education spotlight this is not a new concept it was thought back long time by mahatma gandhi yes this view was to develop love of manual work in the mind of children it is going to change the mindset of each and every individual each and every parent and each and every children because this concept is not a new concept it has been thought long time by mahatma gandhi that how the manual uh, work uh love of manual work is going to develop in the mind of each and every children vocational education will free the child's mind from bookish language instead made them to learn functional education yes means when we talk about like i am also a parent and i whenever i teach my uh, son he also at times gets so much frustrated that i don't want to learn mama i don't want to learn just close the book i don't want to study and i am getting bored i want to play but whenever i teach him in like practical aspect okay whenever i teach him with some creativity whenever i teach him with some like uh, drama or like visual screen play he just gets so much excited and he wants to learn so much yes i am getting interested to it i want to learn 
so it's very very important that how you're going to make your teach make your children learn that is very important criteria and like this also means children are going to uh, vocational education. Vocational education consists of practical courses through which one aims at skills and experience which are directly linked to career in future. It talks about like skills and experience, okay, about the person. Suppose uh, there's a person, he's an electrician. So what skills and experience he's having? He's having knowledge of electrical things. And there's one carpenter, okay, he's having knowledge of carpentry. There is some like a uh, person who is very good in this parlor, beauty parlor, hairdressing. So all these people are very much good in their skills part. And from them only we can learn so much in the, uh, like we can talk to the uh, expert person and uh, we can learn so much from that. And that is very, it's going to be very, very uh, good. Aim of vocational education is not just to learn that skill, but also use that skill to diminish unemployment. Yes, the focus is not only to learn that skill. Yes, we have learned that skill. No, we are going to learn that skill and how we are going to apply that skill. Now, if I talk about that, how we are going to implement this in our Indian curriculum. Yes, it should be made available from grades six to 12. From class six to 12, it is going to be made available. Short-term credit-based project to be picked. So many like short-term credit-based project is going to be picked and the students or teachers, they'll be given certificates for that. Students can opt for courses to have hands-on experience. Joint activities to be conducted to enhance learning and internship to be made available with local industry. Now, I am coming to my the slide about which is talking about benefits. What benefits you're going to get from vocational education? Ready for job. Vocational education makes a student employment ready. It provides students required skills and training for a particular job, such as interior designing, fashion designing, computer networking. Along with the classroom instruction, students also get practical knowledge. This makes the students job ready and expert in their field. Yes, if one person is interested in interior designing, from the beginning itself only means uh, the person will be given so much practical exposure and will be given some training in interior designing. From uh, that uh, time itself, he or she will be so much well-versed in that skill and is going to avail that skill in their future. And that person is going to be so much successful because he has already taken one training and he's going to apply uh, implement that in his uh, curriculum. That's why. If I want to say, uh, give example of myself also means uh, I like opted for HR, I opted for marketing, but I just did my job like that only and my passion and zeal was not that. But now means uh, whenever I study like uh, psychology or study about nutrition, my whole emphasis, my whole uh, passion and Creativity lies in this health and fitness sector only. So now means I'm thinking why I have not opted for this sector. If I would have opted means I would have gained so much success and my passion would have been in some other uh, area. But now I think I have time also I can do that. But still means uh, what passion and creativity uh, lies in your area. You can opt, you should opt for that. And vocational education is, has come such a uh, boon for everyone. Job satisfaction, there are various indirect benefits. For instance, both vocational education boosts confidence of students and they are well-groomed and trained that makes them eligible for specific jobs. It also increases job satisfaction, results in high productivity. Yes, if the person, uh, he knows his job very well, so he's going to be satisfied and confidence level is so much boosted. Low education cost. Vocational courses are easy and cheaper alternative for students who do not want to take a three-year degree course and cannot afford the hostel fees. Yes, so many students who don't have money, who cannot afford hostel fees, okay? For them, vocational courses are very easy and very cheaper alternative. Means uh, so many students are uh, getting like, uh, they are drop out from their schools. So many means reasons are there. Due to that, they're not able to uh, continue their courses. So vocational courses are very cheaper and alternative method. Uh, from that, you can complete your course, degree course is the best option. Who cannot manage the expenses for college degree. Now, if I uh, talk about offering, uh, what vocational education offering is giving, uh, is 
the offering. The development of vocational capacities will go hand in hand with development of academics or other capacities. Vocational education will be integrated in educational offering of all secondary schools in phased manner. Higher educational institutions will offer vocational education either on their own or through partnership with NGOs or other industries. Skill lab will also set up. Incubation centers will be set up for career guidance and counseling. New learning methods and digital tools will be introduced. This is all offerings. Now we go to our next slide, which is talking about the target. What NEP means, what is our target? At least 50% of learners through school and higher education system shall have exposure to vocational education by 2025. Means by 2025, at least 50% of learners, they're going to have exposure of vocational education. Vocational education will be integrated in all secondary schools and higher education in a phased manner. Beginning of vocational exposure at early ages, that is from class six to eight. Quality vocational education, middle and secondary education, that is from class ninth to 12th. They can continue vocational education into higher education. Collaboration, collaboration okay? Means in this only, uh, there is one term that is collaboration. Academic institutes collaborate with industrial training institutes, polytechnic, local businesses, hospitals, and NGOs. So means uh, we must be thinking that what is the purpose of this collaboration? Why means like uh, they're going to collaborate with industrial training institutes? Uh, what is the purpose? The purpose behind is to create opportunities for students to go for practical exposure. As we have already studied in our first slide itself, that just to have the practical exposure interaction with field experts means this collaboration is required. So they are going to collaborate with the training institutes, polytechnic hospitals and NGOs. Now I come to my next slide that talks about NCIVE. Ministry of Education will contribute National Committee for Integration of Vocational Education along with industry participation to oversee the effort and should also earn mark budget for promoting this integration. Moving to my next slide that talks about upper primary stage classes six to eight means how this vocational education is going to work for the upper primary stage classes. Hands on experience on carpentry, electric work, metal work, gardening, pottery activities to be given to uh, students. All these activities students are going to have their hands on experience and are going to learn so much from this. Informal internship in this student will be sent to local skilled person for practical learning. Means they'll be sent to some local skilled person so that they can have an idea of this practical learning. Because I suppose means whatever you're learning from the practical things, practical aspects, you can learn and you can uh, have a record of this in your mind rather than means like mugging it up from book because uh, one day you are mugging it up and the next day you're going to forget that and it's not going to help you for the long run. But whatever the skills you're learning in your practical exposure and from your seeing it okay you're seeing it and it's just going to record in your mind so means like the students there's so many students i suppose uh who are still in this uh, like confusion that how to study uh how to means uh, like uh, do my study part because i'm not able to gain so much good marks so the only thing is that you have to like uh, just have a record of all the things in your mind rather than have a uh, learning of bookish things so my next slide that is about secondary class, nine to 12. At secondary level, students will be allowed to mix and match academics with skill education, with sports, art, music, and with soft skill training. There is one like Lok Vidya will be accessible to provide traditional knowledge to students. There, I suppose this Lok Vidya is going to one have one mobile app where like teachers and students can have a thorough knowledge about the curriculum which is going to be held in the vocational education. So I'm coming to my last slide that talks about the conclusion. In conclusion, students who complete these courses are better at a job than those who only receive an academic education. Definitely means the, the students who are going to opt for these courses are going to perform so much good in their jobs rather than the people who are just receiving an academic education. Also, it is an asset of the country that helps the economy to develop and grow. Yes, it is an asset to our country, which is going to develop and going to give so much higher productivity. 
In addition, there is a high demand for the skilled people in both the government and business sector. Yes, the skilled people, this hardworking people are going to be in so much demand in our upcoming future. So this was all about from my side, I suppose I have given whatever I have uh, known. Thank you so much, ma'am. And thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Neha, for giving us a very, very detailed insight into, you know, what is vocational skilling going to be looking like for our schools over there. You went right into how, what is the meaning of it? What is the idea behind it? What are the collaborations? What, what is the school sector looking like? Uh, how is it going to be treating the vocational education over there? Thank you so much for, a, uh, as I said, a detailed in-depth. Someday, I'm surely going to catch you and have a conversation on how is, you know, mental health and vocational connected to each other. Is there a therapy relation between the two? That is food for thought. We will definitely get back to it. It. But right now, put back to both of my speakers, and I'd like you to take a minute or two to just share some thoughts on a very pertinent student based uh, question. Now, when we talk about skilling, right? So, skilling, as in, you know, what are the options in vocational skilling? We talk about gardening, pottery, you know, mechanics, and uh, uh, carpentry, and so on. Do you seriously think that our children are? interested and will be inclined to learn these skills have reached enough pride and dignity to these skills for our children to be motivated or do we need to do more about it over there right so maybe uh, dr sunil Srivastav, can you help us uh, with some of your insight on this you know worry which goes on in the minds of all educators Right, ma'am. Uh, I was referring one of the articles uh, as a part of my preparation for this session. And this article was written by Akka Sethi and was published in uh, on June 3rd, 2022 in Times of India. So he says a very, very good, uh, I would just like to quote him. Vocational education, education needs to change from merely preparing a student to earn a living to preparing them for vibrant careers. So we have to show a big picture to the students, like doing a gardener, doing a gardening course, it doesn't mean you become merely a gardener. You can have in 100 acres a full nursery. I have visited a few places, ma'am, in South India. The nurseries are not in square feet, they're in acres, oh, wow. 100 acres, 50 acres. And those people are not educated like we all. And still they have a huge turnover. So what through this, though it may not be like, for example, pottery. A pottery makes a huge businessman. I mean, we have to show them a big picture. The same pot which has purchased at roadside and if it goes to Amazon, the prices are hugely different. Hugely different. So we have to blend the tradition with modernism. We had to show what benefits they are going to have. If you tell just for the skill you are for interest you are taking this, no. Tell them that this is how you can make a career. And ma'am, in the last 60 years, a lot of social changes have happened in India. Many who were underprivileged, they brought their in a due place. Whether we talk about the women, we talk about uh, the transgenders, we talk about uh, the uh, other, other group of people. But ma'am, the people who are really working, I mean, the course like vocational education still has not come to the drawing room of the elites. And until unless that is brought to the elite, and I think the school is the place where this common man who toils day and night and has he does a very fantastic career. This is this is the media. I mean, the students could be the media, they'll start respecting, they'll start following. And they can make a lot of innovations in that. I mean, not necessarily that he should put his hand in the clay. With the help of the 3D printer, he can do miracles, ma'am. By learning basics of pottery, 
I mean, for to give example of poultry life. So there are many many things which can be done. Second important thing is that uh, the schools have to focus more upon the infrastructural aspects. The minimum infrastructural aspects should be you know made arranged. Like for example, I was uh, uh, last year I was trying to get a, a poultry workshop for my for my students, and we had talked to one of the very good institutions there in Maharashtra, and we contacted them. and we told them to come down to nanded and give us the list of what things we should be requiring it was consultation basically and they said we'll first take the workshop with the children we'll train them and then we'll give the list and we'll make every setup for them so what minimum infrastructure in my school we have a work education lab man it is in almost 1000 square feet where there is a separate provision for vocational i mean for electricity and plumbing work and this was done much before nep came into you know limelight so we we tried to do that so we had to create our own resources all the schools all the delegates who are you know attending this session i would like to tell that if no one is going to come and tell you to do this you have to take the initiative this is a part of social revolution 75 years before 80 years before mahatma gandhi came on the picture he took the initiative india got independent and we are celebrating 75 years of independence and on this note now we have to become something new we have to come out of box we don't have to think ki curriculum padhana hai curriculum se kuch nahi hona hai jitna hona hai utna hoga jiska hoga uska hoga but we also have to this skills i would also like to say yes ma'am yeah yeah i would also like yes, to say ma'am and sir yes uh, means uh, how vocational education is means helping in for like uh, mental health issues means i am working in an uh, ngo that is ear to hear means how much it is helping for men's like mental health so many people means so many students i am seeing like means uh, they are just uh, studying for this curriculum and they are going into depression and anxiety because so much pressure is there from school and from like parents itself they don't want to study and they don't have interest also means i don't want to study and still they are studying and they are doing their job also they are going to like offices they are working they are earning a good amount of salary they are working in abroad but what about the self satisfaction but what about your mental health it is declining day by day means i was also working in recruitment sector i was going to noida i was working but to be very frank i my health was deteriorating and i was not well means like i also started facing anxiety because i was not satisfied in my job but now as i am a public speaker my whole interest lies in this public speaking and reading articles about health and nutrition and now i feel so good from mentally and from like inside and i feel so means like satisfied from inside so it's very means important that how mental health plays a vital role in this vocational education part thank you so much great great ma'am and ma'am and sir so to reiterate i'm just going to revise uh, the, your answers so that we have time for a quick next question and answer as well so two points which given uh, given by sir beautiful inputs that focus on the big picture show the children the big picture and then they understand that if you want to be an engineer it's good to get your hands dirty to learn carpentry to learn mechanics you know it's very good to do that and also focus on the infrastructure what facilities are available maybe you can pull it out over there and ma'am said that vocational helps in mental health issues beautifully said i also see that not all vocational education need to lead to a career you know it can lead to a hobby it can lead to mental well being it life skilling you know so we just because a child takes up carpentry in ninth doesn't mean he's going to grow up to be a potter or you know an architect and all he may just do it for life skills he may just do it because it gives him or her joy and pleasure wonderful inputs coming in for that i'm sure it's going to help all the educators who tuned in sir yeah i will like raise this hand here a quick one line up please in case for the school i mean I'd, i would like to just tell that infrastructure is as less it cost of the infrastructure is less than 25000 rupees to set up minimum a carpentry workshop a minimum electric workshop and a plumbing workshop man the total cost of these three labs in 10 by 10 room can be set up to begin with yeah 
Uh, so for all the heads who are listening in, if you need more uh, information, I'm sure they're going to get in touch with you, sir. And, be happy. and get the needful. So uh, we have a little more time left to our disposal. I'm, I'm going to jump into another topic, which is very, very, uh, you know, hard, which is my teachers, right? So how can we make sure that the teachers are open also motivational education you see the infrastructure the facilities the capacity building measures that we have at hand are limited we have limited time limited resources the same teacher who's teaching math science english hindi is also going to be taking up vocational education she can use whatever resources she wants to no doubt about it but how do we make the teacher feel good about it how do we make her feel aspirational that yes I'm going to be teaching vocational education and it's going to make a difference. So who would like to go first for that? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes sir. Ma'am, somewhere in the NEP it says that yes, the, sir, please. the approach should be multidisciplinary. And it speaks volumes, ma'am. Now, with, suppose a teacher is teaching Hindi and if she is taking a topic, Mere Ghar Ka Mali, so what she has to do? She has to take the children outside the classroom and just see what are, what are the plans are available and that lesson can be completed very much there. True. So the teacher doesn't have to think very hard. They can't, they don't have to go technical. They can do with available resources like mm -hmm. and each school, each teacher, I mean, they have their own resources and they can pull on, pull on those resources and they can speak up on that. To teach how the what I mean, how, uh, you know, what we can say, how the electric passes the circuit and something like that. I'm not a uh, science from the science background. So if you talk, if you talk about electric circuit, she can take a help of a science teacher or a physics teacher precisely. So this is an opportunity also for all of the teachers to work not only in isolation, to work collaboratively. So it is multidisciplinary approach itself means that there has to be collaborative, collaborative working. So science teacher taking help from the Hindi teacher, Hindi teacher will be taking help from um, the other day. Yesterday I was listening to, you know, watching KBC. So there was one engineering college professor. He taught, he used to teach everyone by singing poetries or, you know, uh, remaking the songs. So we have to find out our own ways and means. It's like that a mother does not require to teach how to nurture his her own child. So this is all about the education. Yeah. Great. So what you're saying is, sir, that the teacher need not worry too much. She can just ease into her role of a subject matter expert and just be multidisciplinary. Right. As, as the NP is already uh, forecast that we, we, you know, we need to step out of our role as a Hindi teacher, English teacher, maths teacher. So there is maths in science, there is English in maths and so on. So that's how you have to deal with vocational education as well. Neha ma'am, over to you. Your thoughts on this service. Uh, yes, ma'am. I also think means sir has given such a valid point about this only means the practical exposure means this is the only thing means like uh, whatever they are teaching means students get bored in classes means whatever they're teaching. So it's very, very important to have practical exposure as sir said, suppose we talk about gardening, they have to take the children out and to tell them about each and everything about the plants and, and greenery, everything. So like this only, it is going to like uh, work very well for students also and for teachers also. And the facilities should be given to teacher. Like I suppose incubation center is also being set up for the teachers for their uh, career counseling and guidance. So I suppose means, uh, I means agree with sir this point about the teachers part. Thank you. Yeah, so what you're saying is also in a way that it's an opportunity for the teachers also to go back to their day, school days and maybe, uh, you know, grasp another vocation, you know, we never had a chance to learn about carpentry, if I'm interested, maybe I join the ch children when they go in for that vocational class as well and learn as I move along because a teacher is a lifelong learner, right? If you don't learn, then you're not a teacher at all. Exactly. 
All right, ma'am. So wonderful thoughts coming in over here. And as we close our session, I'm going to ask one question uh, more to both our experts over here. So, uh, you know, if you want to quickly, please, because, you know, if you were still gap analysis, right? So India of today and the job prospects which are going to be available well, maybe say 15 years from now, children are going to be professionally productive, right? So what do you see? What do you foresee that 15 years from now, the skilling sector, the vocational skilling sector would be, you know, we would be dealing with what skills for our children? You know, I'm not going to put words in our mouth, but what do you think we should start doing foreseeing the uh, workspace 15 years from now? Over to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. I mean, it's a very interesting. Ma'am, uh, we don't know what is going to happen 15 years from now, 15 years afterwards, right? Because change is constant, but the pace of change has increased, ma'am. What we saw in the world 30 years ago, it's not there. And next 15 years, it's going to be changed. When you talk about job prospects, we are not sure. It is said that, widely said that 60% of the present day jobs will be vanishing in next in the next 10 to 15 years if this is true then we don't have to focus upon the jobs we have to focus upon the skills and precisely nep has very very well highlighted it is about 21st century skills now okay. and those skills are communication collaboration creativity critical thinking and problem solving abilities leadership and uh, citizenship so these are the six skills which broadly one has to have without that uh, the person who is entering into the next era will be outdated. It will not be acceptable in the society, whether it's a job market, whether it is a family or whether it is a society. Very rightly said, sir. Great insight coming from you that uh, vocational skilling is not only aiming to be uh, to make you a better job person, to be a better professional, but also to be a better person per se. Because uh, skilling, you can't really divide skilling into professional skills and life skills and skills. You know, all of this together make for a happy and a successful person. So all this is going to be part of it. So focus the story too much about the job. That's what you said. Over to you, Neha, ma'am, your thoughts, please. Yes, ma'am. I think uh, for the upcoming next 15 years, this vocational education is going to be such a good move, such a tremendous move. Means uh, so many people are going to be so much like successful, happy, cheerful. Because whatever they want to uh, work in their own skill area, they're going to work in that and they're going to flourish so much. Means I can like, I'm working on my part right now after marriage, after kid, and I'm working so with such productivity and with such cheerful and passion that I'm learning others also. Means whatever I am learning, I'm learning healing others also. So means we are working in such a like a group zone and everyone is like, getting cheerful and getting learning so much from each and every month. It's going to be, I think, wonderful. I mean, after 15 years, vocational education, is really a nice move from the like NEP sectors. So, so what Neha ma'am is saying is that the NEP is rightly focusing on vocational education because the world 15 years from now is going to be world. We really don't know. Today, who would have thought in 2019 that Zoom would be, you know, uh, a click of the hand advice that we all use. We I remember clearly my time as an academic head where the IT head would come and help me set up a Zoom and I could have a, a webinar. You know, the word webinar was also very new in the dictionary over there. So yeah. rightly said. And there's a wonderful comment which is coming from one of our viewers, Nandini Patil. And she says that ask the child also, you know, maybe what would they like to be? what content they know and uh, rightly said you know children these days are very clued up and they may have the answers to a lot of questions which the teacher can always assimilate ponder over thing and then decide what do we want to do the good part about NEP is that it has given us the frame but the heroine or the hero remains the teacher. You know, it is up to the teacher to star cast anyone to, you know, deal with skilling whichever way they want to do that as long as the outcomes are met. That's a beautiful thought. And on this thought, we're...
we're going to end our session today, dot on time, but it's been a wonderful, wonderful interactive session. And we just love getting your thoughts, uh, Dr. Rivastav and Neha Srivastav on reimagining uh, vocational education. It's such a vast topic. I'm sure we could have gone on for another hour, but we will leave this conversation to another day and another day. We hope that our viewers could gather some insights and some values into, you know, the million dollar question that how is it going to look like for our children, for our schools, for our teachers, and for our parents and students as well. Thank you so much. IIU International Internship University, Piyush Panditji, Dr. Snigda, and the entire team, you know, Karina who's joining us from abroad all the time. Thank you so much for putting in so much of effort and hard work into bringing this platform alive, which is, I'm sure, benefiting thousands and thousands of educators all across. Thank you, more power to you, and uh, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. Sir, we'll take a rain check and maybe Neha and I will drop to Mandir. Do come, ma'am. I will be more than happy. It's very famous for Gurudwara Hajur Sahib. And you will be delighted to come sir. to Mandir, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much for being Thank you so much. with us today. Good evening ahead.